The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 11 of MMA to the Max. I am your host, Robert Taylor, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Joe Hudson, a.k.a. Riverside Joe. What's up, Joe? How you doing on this Friday evening? I'm doing fantastic, man. Enjoying a nice Friday night fight night of the UFC. It's a nice uh, turn of events. UFC on Friday night, Bellator on Saturday night. Yeah, I'm actually I'm really excited about uh, UFC being on Friday tonight because uh, my new <laughs> job that I spoke about before kind of screws me up on my schedule a little bit. I wasn't able to watch uh, last week's fight until the day after, and then when we were going getting set to record, we had a little bit of a mishap. We won't get into it, but things happen. Things you know, out of our control, and uh, unfortunately we weren't able to record. But here we are this week, and why not just talk about what we might have talked about last week? Yeah, we can get into last week's card a little bit. I mean, we've got a couple cards to talk about of, of actual completed fights as in uh, Branch versus uh, Rockhold, as well as tonight's fight, Okami versus uh, OSP. So yeah, Branch, Rockhold, on that card... I find it so weird that you said both of those main events backwards. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do that all the time. I don't know what it is, dude. All the time I do that. It, talk to me about any any fight card, and I always go backwards. It's just maybe because I'm uh, emotionally dyslexic or something like that. I have no idea. But on the Rockhold Branch card, give me give well, me some of your highlights. Now, what do you, what do you think? What do you want to brush up on as far as implications, great fights, well, stand-up before performances? We, before we do that, before we jump into that, why don't we just highlight our beer of the week what are you drinking tonight joe deja vu my friend stella Artois. not only is it delicious but it's on sale at bonds for 9.99 a 12 pack if you buy three or more and you bet your ass i bought three or more not so a bad deal <laughs> not a bad deal uh no deja vu as well on my end i am sticking with the uh, the modelos uh it's just a very very nice uh Nice beer, a nice drink that goes down. Uh, We've been kind of busy with the new job and setting up for the little one's 10th birthday party tomorrow. So I wanted something with a little more of a a crisp taste compared to something a little more hoppy like an IPA. But it works. What what are we drinking tomorrow night? Uh, Nothing tomorrow night, but during the day I'll drink whatever (laughs) I want. But i got to go to sleep for work. (laughs) I'll be be drinking tomorrow night at the uh, little one's 10th birthday party. So... I'll, I'll be drinking you know during the that. day. <laughs> yeah, you got yeah, no, you got that new job, man. Don't don't mess with that, dude. Super stoked for you on that one. But uh, yeah, back to uh, and I appreciate that. Back uh, back to talking about the last week's episode that we weren't able to record about, and the uh, the show Rockhold versus Branch. Everybody by now, it's been a week. They they I'm pretty sure they know exactly what happened, who won, who looked great, who didn't look great, who was your uh mvp of, of the show and uh in your mind who do you believe was the most impressive performer last week it's a toss-up for me between uh Gillespie and smith the, the reason i think Gillespie, i expected him to look great right they're great gagar gregor 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 that's how i say yeah, gregor, gregor Gillespie. Gregor. I expected him to look great. I expected him to put on performance. I expected him to do well, winning by submission second round. But he looked phenomenal. But for me, the reason I think Smith was impressive was because Lombard hung in there. Lombard, I thought, was going to gas out. I picked Smith third round on TKO. I expected Lombard to gas out more than he did. And the fact is, he didn't. But Smith, instead of getting beat up by Lombard's strength and resistance and walking through Smith's power, he stepped up and he kept moving and he kept growing throughout the fight. And because of that, I just saw I just saw him, you know, again, yeah, he's a journeyman, but I saw him step up into a, a better role, a real a real fighter's fighter. You saw a fighter's heart in there. So for me, that was my standout performance. That was my MVP of the night. I think with uh, Anthony Smith, I think he's growing past the uh the, the journeyman status in my mind. He's he's looked very impressive in this run in the UFC. And like you, I had also had him uh, picked for a third round TKO. So yeah, we got that perfect. Um, Hector Lombard just—I just think he just hasn't involved his game enough in the sport. He's always relying on his uh, his power shots. He doesn't set anything up. Um, and once you get that timing figured out, you're able to just uh, do whatever you want with him. 
And that's pretty much what Smith did. He, he figured out his timing. He yeah, was taken over. That, and, and, and to me, Hector Lombard used to be a smaller weight class version of uh, Yoel Romero. You figure out his timing and you don't allow yourself to be countered by whatever it is he's going to throw at you and you're going to beat him. And I think Smith got hit by Lombard too and he just kept pushing forward and I don't know, man, it was a great performance. So hats off to him. Yeah, it was a great performance. Um, I, I, I can't give him uh, the MVP, at least in my mind. Uh, that would go to Kamaru Usman, who absolutely starched uh, Sergio Moraes. And the reason why I give him the MVP, and he was my big performer of the night, uh, it was his first finish in, in the UFC since coming to the UFC proper. And the man is on, I believe, now a 10-fight win streak. He deserves top 10 competition. I, I know he was... I forgot exactly who he was calling out. I, I know he's been calling out everybody left and right. He used to call out Damian Maya. Um, yeah. I'd love to see him against uh, Ponza Nibio. I think that would be a great fight. I think he beats Ponza Nibio up. I think he goes back to his old ways, wrestles some of the ground, and beats him up with some, some good grounded pound. But yeah, no, I, I agree with you, man. I, I, I had him picked um, to win via lay and pray and dry hump. <laughs> But he proved to have some hands. So, dude, again, Usman looked great. I, I, I'm not going to argue with that MVP either. Like, I, I think I see where you're coming from on that one. He looked phenomenal. Like, I was shocked when he got that knockout. I just stared at my wife with my mouth open like, what what, what, what was that? That was Usman? So, yeah, great job, buddy. And uh, I, I'm not going to agree that he was the MVP, but I'm not going to argue so much with you. I, I think we have a lot to agree with one another tonight, and, and that's going to be another – pseudo agreement so enjoy it yeah well i want to also talk about a special mvp uh, uh of the show um even though he didn't win uh you, you got to give it to alex reyes St- stepping yeah. into the ufc on oh, short yeah. notice at, at a higher weight class against a a, a finisher like mike perry Dude, the- mike perry is a freaking murderer if it wasn't for mma that guy would be freaking killing people on the streets for money like, that's how wicked that guy, and I mean that with the utmost respect. Like, that's just how much disregard he has for his opponent's well-being. But yeah, and to take that fight on short notice up a weight class against someone like that, dude, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you a bit, dude, but I just no, so good. agree with you on that, man. Yeah, no, I, I have so much respect for that man, and that's a uh, that's a local guy from uh, Victorville, California. Yep. So, uh, so much respect, so happy he's there. His brother Dominic just debuted uh, back in June. Uh, I, I think Alex Reyes is a uh, way more talented fighter than his brother, even though his brother debuted with a win. Uh, it wasn't quite the same circumstances as Alex, and uh, Alex's next fight in the UFC will be at 155, I guarantee it, and then he'll show everybody exactly how good he is, and I can't wait for it to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. He took a fight on short notice with Mike Perry so he can get a contract with the UFC. Um, I think he earned a lot of... Um brownie points for doing so so yeah yeah good for him man i keep wanting to say hats off to all these guys because that's kind of my stupid uh verbal crutch but yeah for real he can have my hat i i, I wouldn't i don't know how much they paid him but i wouldn't step in the octagon with mike perry for less than a couple million because i know what that guy is going to do is going to take years off of my life dude so ballsy well a guy who would step in the octagon with mike perry for <clears throat> excuse me less than a million uh robbie lawler the guy that mike perry called out yeah, I'd, dude. I'd be down to see that. I'd be okay with seeing that fight. But then recently, though, uh, in, in, within the week uh, after the show leading up to tonight, Mike Perry was called out by Emil Meek. And yeah, I think that's a good fight, too. Man. I'd love to see that fight. <laughs> Emil Meek is really so fight. underrated. Well, those are, those are again, again, I, I, I think both of those guys are going to fight in a phone booth. They're both going to take the center of the octagon. Neither one of them are going to step outside the double black lines, and they're going to fight a, a technical brawl. All hands with some leg kicks, nothing going high, maybe a body kick, but it's going to be a technical brawl between the two of those guys. The same I think it would be with Lawler. I think the winner of that should get the top five fight against Lawler. Because me, yeah. if, you beat, if you beat Perry, Meek, then you deserve it. Perry, if you can beat Meek, I think he deserves it now, but that's even more proof. If he can put a hurting on a guy like Emil Meek, then, dude, take your top five fight with, with Lawler, man, and make your point. And uh, 
I'm still riding the Perry train. I love that guy. He's a great fighter, man. A finisher. He's got true finisher blood in him. Yeah, I, I like Mike Perry. I like watching him fight. I'm not a big fan of his uh, his uh, outside the uh, octagon antics. Um, like social media, some of the things. I mean, he's said some pretty awful things before. Um, yeah. I don't think he beats. Yeah, I, I don't think he you. beats Robbie Lawler. I don't think he beats anybody in the top five. To be honest, he's one of those guys that's gonna just. He's basically going to be like a uh, Chris Lytle. Not going to be a really? champion. Not going to be a champion. But he's going to always entertain and win nothing but uh, bonuses. Joe Lozon, Chris Lytle, whoever you want to say. Joe Lozon, yeah. And that, that's just. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's really nothing wrong with that. Like you don't think he can beat Wonderboy? No. Robbie Lawler, maybe. Condit? Cerrone? And now we're talking guys that he can be competitive with. Lawler, because Lawler's gonna want to box with him. I mean, he could be competitive with those guys. He's gonna be a top five guy. I just and, and I, yeah, I, I mean he's got, the, the he's got the power guy. to land something, sure, but te- technique wise, I mean Lawler's just head and shoulders above him. Carlos Condit's head and shoulders above him, technique wise. Uh, even even uh, uh, jo- uh, Jorge Masvidal, technique wise, it has an head and shoulders above him. Both you and I are going to agree that Masvidal is arguably, depending on matchup. Unfortunately, with him, it really comes down to matchup. Probably one of the best welterweights in the world. I think him versus Tyron would be a great fight because Tyron is going to do what he does and keep his back against the cage and circle away. And I think Grant Game Red is just going to cut the cage off and and, and point strike him and stay out of distance and. He's quick enough to, you know, dodge any of the speed and quickness that uh, the Tyron's going to throw at him. So I, I don't know. And just like Wonder Boy, but Wonder Boy isn't as aggressive as Masvidal. That's why I think Masvidal would win. Um, Carlos Condit, again against a guy like Mike, like Perry, I think Condit's not going to use his technique. He's going to get caught in a brawl because that's, you know, because Carlos is a fucking brawler too. He's a technical brawler. He'll get caught in the brawl and make it a good fight, and I think he can beat him. But again, I'm a Carlos fan. You know, I could be going for Carlos the whole way. Cerrone, I think he can do the same thing. Cerrone doesn't fight good, and you put a lot of pressure on him. And I think Mike is just going to walk him down, and, and that's how he could beat Cerrone. So I think he's a top five guy. And, and I don't know. That's why I just don't think that comparison to maybe like a Lozon is accurate. Lozon is great, puts on great performances, but Lozon's not a top five guy. He's always going to be top ten. Well, Always he got top to top man. five at one point. Lozon was on the cusp of the title shot, but each time he, he just lost to a legit top five fighter. So that's true. That's, that's true. where that's where I'm, I'm. That's where I think Mike Perry's ceiling is going to be. So okay. that's just, I mean, know, that could be proven wrong. So we, yeah, we don't that's know. A that could be proven point. wrong. That's a good point. Yeah. Again, fuck. I hate to not argue with you. That's kind of a good point, you jerk. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. I, eventually, everybody comes around. <laughs> um, no, I'm yeah. never coming around on some of these, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, so the main event, Luke Rockle, David Branch. Uh, geez, Rockle needs to keep his hands up. That's all. That's that's mostly what I can get out of this fight. Um, he he, and my, I think Branch is a legit top ten fighter. Um, Rockle is legit one of the best, probably the best middleweight in the world, depending on which Rockle shows up. Uh, but Jesus, man, if he if he keeps his hands down like he did in the first round with Branch. I, I, he's 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 not going to be the champion again. That's that's all I can say. That that was no. I mean, he came out with the win, sure, but anybody else that hits harder than Branch, which is a lot of the middleweights, Yoel Romero, Jacare Souza, freaking he was. I understand he was sick, but he was kind of getting pieced apart by what was obviously an, an injured, or now we know an injured um, uh, Chris Weidman. Uh, and then he was he himself was in here, so I get that too. But yeah, he he gets that chin exposed. He does. But, but the one thing that he does do is if he gets you down, you had better do everything in your power to not let him on top of you. He has got he's got the best top game in MMA. Who's got better? He I does. Mean, it's scary. It's terrifying. His top game is terrifying. If if you go to the ground with Luke Rockhold, you better hope you're not on the bottom because that's game over. It's Jesus. I've never seen anybody's top game that scary. Maybe Ben Askren and all of MMA can compete with that kind of top game, but nothing against Ben. It's Askren. not as he terrifying though. Not no, as terrifying. Not. And he and he he works more from side control and in the guard and stuff. But if you if you let Rockhold get mount, just tap, just be done. I mean, my God, is his top game just the sickest I've ever freaking seen? Which was a uh, which actually kind of 
was a point I wanted to bring up too. That you said just tap. David Branch did tap, and a lot of people online were pissed off about that, saying, "Oh yeah, well he has no heart." No, he's smart. I'm sorry, he's smart. Yeah, he wasn't he, getting he out. To, he, he was getting his that. ass beat. It was over. Why take yeah. unnecessary punishment? Uh, just the, the card before that, we were talking about Gavin yeah, Tucker getting his ass beat by Rick Glenn, uncomfortably getting his ass beat, and the ref did nothing. And sometimes fighters are just too tough for their own good. And no, no, branch branch tap. It was the right thing to do because what was he going to do? He he was spread out, and anyone will tell you that hip pressure. You know, talk to Demi Lovato. The hip pressure that Rock Cole can put on you will change your life. You ain't getting up. You ain't rolling over. And so, what are you gonna do? Sit there and take more punches? No, yeah, it's it fine. I'm, I'm glad in our, our MMA fantasy, the UFC fantasy league, they did count it as a second round TKO, because that gave me a perfect and helped me out for that night. The, the it shouldn't have been had though. It's year. still a submission. It's a submission due to I, punches. I agree with you. It's a submission. He tapped out. He gave up, so to speak, and respectfully so. But yeah, I just I'm just glad they ruled it as a TKO because that helped me beat you that night because I don't think you did so well last week. <laughs> it was a tough weekend for you, buddy. It was, it was, it was. But uh, you know, I'm just Luke Rockhold though his uh his little comments towards GSP. I, I get it, but I wasn't a fan because it, the fight's happening. Unless GSP gets injured, the fight's happening. Telling GSP to step aside that that's his fight. I'm sorry, dude. I love Luke Rockhold, but you got knocked out, you lost your title, and you haven't. You took over a year off. You don't just get to come in and beat somebody. I think Branch was like ranked number nine. You don't just come yeah. in and rank, beat the number nine ranked guy and demand to take the place uh, of, the a, number, of a challenger in a title fight. The what? The what ranked? The number what ranked middleweight? See now, I sound like I'm you. Yeah. The number what ranked middleweight? Look, this is the look, problem. Look, I'm not a fan of GSP getting the title fight, but the fact is, the fight's made. And, True, and it's on. you can't yeah. just come in after a year off and just say, yeah, no, that fight should be mine. I'm sorry. Yeah, if he'd have beat up sorry, a couple buddy. guys and then had this fight, this would have been his second fight in a year where he whooped up on somebody, then he could say something. I can agree with you there. But see, this is the problem with Rockhold. He's got the skill. He's got the looks. He does not have the mouthpiece. The man needs to take some acting classes. Or, or something, or he, or he needs to get a Paul Heyman. <laughs> you know what I mean? He needs a guy to be his mouthpiece because what he says is, is "Look, man, I'm the greatest welterweight, or I'm the greatest middleweight in the world. What are you doing here, GSP? Go away, bye bye. I'm gonna win the fight." Dude, imagine, imagine if, uh, if after a fight, Rockle after Rockle beats somebody, Paul Heyman steps into the cage and and does the entire post fight interview for him with Rockle just standing there, right? Luke, I will do it for seventy-eight dollars <laughs> a fight plus a ticket and a flight to the fight. I will be your mouthpiece, bro. I can do it way better than that. You, you, you're a great fighter, and I think, I think his, he is a cocky guy, and he has all right to be. But it comes across that way, man. He needs to have some emotion. If he'd be like, "Look, I just proved to you guys, I am the best middleweight in the world. I took a year off, and I came in here and I whipped the two division champ in another division. I came out here and I put my stamp on this. This is my fight. If you put some emotion into it, we'd be all on board because that's what sold us on Conor McGregor. You know what I mean? It, he put on a fight and he did the same things that Rockhold did, but when he got on that mic, he didn't go." I'm the greatest fighter in the world. I just destroyed this whole division. I'm moving up to lightweight, and I'm going to fight for the belt. Is that what he did? No. It wasn't Ben Stiller up there freaking just monotoning everything through. Well, man. I, I mean, with Connor, from... it was like with Connor, it was it was a lot. It was talking and a lot of uh, Dana Dana White dick sucking. Um, Part I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, that, that's, but, but that's fine. But Dana White is also a fucking genius. Look at where he helped bring the UFC to what point it got to. So yeah, Dana but, see, White is not a Dana genius. White Dana him. White is not a genius. Dana White is a hard worker. He is a he's, Agreed, he's, he's, he's an endless worker. But he was not a genius because his entire business model was still was taken and borrowed from Vince McMahon, who was a genius. The and Dana White has said that himself. Vince, Vince so McMahon. I cannot say that Dana White is a genius. When he borrowed his entire business model and plan from a lit, an actual business genius, but Dana White is one of the hardest working uh, I'm not, people I'm not, in the I'm entire world. On, I'm not going to shit on Vince McMahon, but the truth is, and we both know this: Vince McMahon had an opportunity to buy the UFC way back when, before Tough came out, and he said, "I can't buy him because I can't control who wins." So Dana White took the business model set up by Vince McMahon 
and put it in a much more difficult spot because you can't dictate the winners. You can't decide who's your heel and who's your face. He can't do that. Well, yeah, that's that's so Dana fine. White that had to sense. build out of he had to build the same business model using the same business model and successfully doing it without being able to script it. To me, how to figure that out and to work that out to a real world scenario is the reason I'm calling Dana White a genius. And I'm not negating his worth ethic, work ethic because he has it. But what he did is he saw someone with the skill that Luke Rockhold has because I think Luke Rockhold's skill, let's just let's say it's comparable to the MMA skill that McGregor has shown in the UFC, but McGregor had the proper mouthpiece. He didn't need writers. He didn't need people writing things for him to say. McGregor did it. I think if Rockhold would put some passion behind what he was saying – and get rid of the goddamn monotone, he would be the biggest star in the UFC right now because no offense to the smaller guys, everyone's drawn to the heavyweights, the light heavyweights, the middleweights, the guys who are big. I think he can do it if he would just stop being, I'm the best guy and I can beat everybody. I mean, I'm fucking sick of that shit, Luke. Put well, some I mean, passion into it, I man. Get, I, get, I guess that Luke's just a uh, proof positive that good looks do not always uh, uh, equal charisma, so... You're one hundred percent. That that's that's part of the fucking truth. Because if you're good looking your whole life, you never had to work at anything and develop a personality. So that's why you and I are great on the goddamn radio because we are one or uh, two um, not dime pieces. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe maybe a couple nickels, but on a good day after I take a shower and my hair's just been cut, I'm not alone. I'm a good nickel. Uh, but yeah, so well. I think I think we covered it. I uh, I think uh, with Rockhold, I think the next logical fight for him would probably just Yo Romero, honestly. Uh, unless of course Bisping or GSP, whoever wins that fight, it gets injured somehow, most likely because they don't want to defend a title after that. Yep. So the winner then, of that is supposed to fight Whitaker. Yeah, um, but I'm saying if, if one of them gets it, injured or takes time retire. off, then you might as well do Rockhold versus Whitaker for the interim. Until yeah. whoever wins that fight, I, I, honestly, I think that's what's going to happen. I no really do. Gonna, no one's going to accept another interim battle at, at middleweight. It's going to ruin middleweight. So that fight happens. Bisbing wins. I believe he's going to win. Nothing against GSP, but Bisbing wins. Bisbing retires, and then it's Whitaker versus Rockhold to unify, quote unquote, the belt. That's what happens. Again, I've been right so far. In my middleweight predictions, right? Was I not right, friggin'? I'm going to tell you right now that seven weeks ago, no, Rockhold's next fight is probably going to be Robert Whitaker for the interim title. It's going because... to be Robert Whitaker to unify the belt because Bisbee's going to win. He's going to retire. That's going to make Whitaker the non-linear champ, and he'll have to defend his belt to make it the quote-unquote linear, legitimate belt. That's and that will be against Rockhold. Uh, I'm agreeing what, with what you, but I'm not saying it's be. for an interim. What a joke that's going to be. Interim. You know what? It, it's not if uh, see now see now I'm going back on my words from earlier. It's not if you look at the way Rocco looks at it, is where Bisbing's not the real champ, even though I but think he is, he is the real champ. He's the linear he champ. Him. Bisbing's the linear champ, right? Yeah, he beat him. One hundred percent, purely yeah. linear. It, go, it, it went from Rich Franklin to Anderson. I mean, you can you can even go back further to from Evan Tanner to Rich Franklin to Anderson Silva to uh, Weidman to Rockhold to Bisbing. That's linear as it gets. So he's the real champ. So if, if, if that's one thing, again, Rockhold, think about what you're doing. If you're trying to discredit the guy who knocked you out and got the belt and he's not the real champ, well, he took it from you. So you're not the real champ. So then it's Weidman or it's Silva. Who's the real champ then? It's fucking Bisbing. Bisbing's the real champ. It is. It's Bisbing. And I'm going to be really upset if we don't get the, uh, the, the, the trilogy fight from Rockhold and Bisping. I'm going to be really upset about that. Uh, I think he I deserves it. I love to see it. it. I'd love to see it, but it's going to go the same way as the first fight because I don't think Rockhold is taking anybody lightly ever again. He's still a slow starter in the first round. He's got to get his bearings. And unless he can get that freaking right hand up, he's going to be going night-night again. But uh, he proved to have that right hand a little bit low. And if if I'm Javier Mendez, I am duct-taping that hand to his goddamn chin. (laughs) No more jabs. You just throw left hands and you keep that right hand right here. You know what I mean? Because he's a southpaw. Keep that right hand up. Duct tape it to the chin and learn how to throw kicks and punches from there, man. Or I don't know. I, I want to see Rockhold do great things. I like him. I, I liked him back in Strike Force. I thought he was a phenomenal fighter with great speed, technique, power, skill. 
That reminds Which, me. Uh, I wanted to. Uh, I didn't really want to, but I, I I gotta bring it up right now. Um, don't bring it up. I saw I saw a, uh, there was a post online going around. Uh, some people talking about who are the uh, you know the best fighters in Strike Force. Like who are the best Strike Force fighters of all time? And it really irritated me that they had Gilbert Melendez at number five. Well, because when you talk was, about Strike uh, Force. Because when you strike talk about Strike Force, Gilbert Melendez was Strike Force. I'm mean, uh, gonna look that up because who who was one through four? I wish I, I wish I had it uh, like queued up right now. I really yeah. did. I really yeah. did. But I I know I it, it was horrible, man. But like I think they had like Alistair Overeem over him, even though he only fought like three times. Um, it, they didn't even have Josh Thompson on the list, which really bugged the really? hell out of me. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was a topology. I for, I forgot where I saw it to be honest, but it, it just it's something that irked me through this week, and I I, I thought I'd just bring it up since we were talking. You mentioned Strike Force, um, okay. but yeah. Just so so if anybody has any uh any opinions on it, and if you have an opinion on uh who are the best Strike Force fighters of all time, and you don't have Gr- Gilbert Melendez as number one, you're wrong. Sorry, sorry. The man the man was Strike Force. The way Tito Ortiz. Was UFC for the longest time? Gilbert Melendez was Strike Force. Yeah, one hundred, one hundred percent. I have to agree with you. He, 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 he bled Strike Force, whatever color they were. Yeah, he, he totally was, man. I agree. I agree with you. I don't know why he wouldn't have been number one. I, I, I was, put, I was dumb. Uh, Jacare yeah. in. I'd have put Jacare in there. I'd have put. Um, I think you, Jacare, Dan, I think they did have Jacare above him, which I still I'd, disagreed with. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd put Dan Henderson in there, but he did some fun things while he was over there because he really wanted to leave the UFC. And he you know, now that you say that, I remember. He, uh, I think the top was a uh, 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 Cormier, Cormier should be in there. Daniel Cormier was number one. Then it was uh, Jacare, Gegard Mousasi, Dan Henderson, okay. and I'm like, no, okay. First of all, Jacare and Gegard Mousasi's most of their careers spent in Japan. Uh, yes, I know they were champions of Strike Force. Dan Henderson, he had like, three fights, four fights in Strike Force tops, from what I can remember. Um, and one of them, he was dominated by Jake Shields. Daniel yeah. Cormier was there for a cup of coffee, in a sense, for the the uh, a couple of fights before, and then the uh, he won the Grand Prix. That's fine. That's fine if you Dude, want to rank him what really a, high. What a what a underdog victory that was, huh? Yeah, well, he I mean he had to fight less fight. I mean in the tournament at least he didn't have to fight through the tournament. He was a reserve. But and I, I he won a reserve fight, but that doesn't count. It's not the same. Um, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at something here from Tapology. I'm just saying it's got number one as uh, Melendez, number two Barnett, number tapology. three Jacare, number four Cormier, number five uh, Musasi, number six uh, Rafael uh, Cavalcante, uh, number seven Rockhold, then Mohamed Lawal, and then Josh Thompson and Tyron Woodley. This I can kind of agree with where this one's at. The topology one I'm seeing right here. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put Ty- I wouldn't wouldn't put Tyron Woodley in there because the first time he took a jump up in competition in Strike Force, he got his ass rocked and knocked out by uh, Nate Marquardt. So yeah, yeah. But I mean, I mean, I mean if you're if you're talking about fighters that went on to do things afterwards, sure, yeah, uh, absolutely. Him and Cormier yeah, should be the top. But I'm talking about King, during Strike Force. King, King Mo wasn't a big Strike Force guy. He's a Bellator <laughs> guy. If you're going to put him to an organization, I'd put him to Bellator. Well, I mean, he was a, the Strike Force light heavyweight champion. He dominated Gegard Mousasi. So yeah, but Gegard Mousasi is a true middleweight. He yeah, was for all sure. Overinflated. Anyways, so we're digressing like a son of a gun. But no, you're right. But yeah. at least uh, this one on topology, I'm gonna agree with the I'm gonna agree with the top five. Well, that's tough because Barnett. Are you really gonna Are you really gonna put Barnett as I'd put Barnett as like a he's a, a pride top guy. ten UFC guy or a pride guy before yeah. I would a Strike Force guy. Jacare DC Musasi is border Cavalcante for sure Strike Force, but eh. Yeah, well, I mean, bottom line is though, if if you don't have Gilbert Melendez as number one, you're wrong. That's a, that's a, that's yeah. that was my point. I saw I, that. I, I agree. Strike he was there. So. Po- he was their poster boy. And and you know what? As soon as uh, Diaz got over there, he was a bit of a poster boy for him as well. And I don't see him on this list. And when when Nick was over there, he was a big poster boy for the uh, Bell or uh, Strike that's Force. That's true. That's true. But I mean, the, the, the Melendez was there a lot longer. Same thing with Josh Thompson. Josh Thompson was a huge sell in San Jose. Huge sell. Sure, absolutely. Josh Thompson, agree. even not even a title fight, could sell sell out that arena. He was would, huge would, in San Jose. 
I would go see Josh Thompson freaking fight today. I'd love to see him do some jujitsu or yeah. something, man. He's a phenomenal athlete. So yeah, but, that's a well. Yeah, moving on, man. Yeah, like you said, we're we're digressing quite a bit here. <laughs> um, UFC Fight Night on Friday: Ovin St. Pru versus Yushin Okami making his return uh, to the UFC from the uh, Pro Fighters League, formerly uh, yeah. World Series of Fighting. His last fight was at 170 pounds, and he takes the fight on short notice at 205 pounds. Yeah, we all know that he was way sh- shrunken in, and he's not a 170 pound fighter at all. That was not the place for him. But see, I thought he looked good against. I mean, he got out wrestled by Fitch, but he didn't seem to have any problems making that weight. Well, who doesn't get out wrestled by Finch? Yeah, but I think he. But that's part of the reason I think he got out wrestled by Finch because he himself is a great wrestler. He's a good wrestler, and so to see him get out wrestled again, Finch is probably one of the best to do it. But to him get completely outmatched by Finch without. It almost seemed like he had no takedown defense. I thought he was too sucked. I think I think I think he's a, he's an eighty fiver. That's where I think he belongs. I think oh, yeah, he's too I small for two hundred five, and he's too big for seven. I think he was an eighty five. I think he's just trying to uh, reinvent himself at one seventy. Yeah, uh, a lot of guys do. They go down a weight class. Talk to Anthony Pettis. Talk to Gilbert Melendez. Talk to right. BJ Penn. I mean, we can go on and on and on about guys who maybe shouldn't have went too late, went too early, whatever. Like Pettis. Well, but, uh, what Okami yeah. shouldn't have done is he uh, shouldn't have uh, reached over St. Prue's neck because uh, you got caught in that uh, Von Prue choke. Yeah, the uh, the the St. Prue choke. Jesus, <laughs> in my mind, Christ, yeah, man. Ovin St. Prue, got this third Von Prue choke, five. three of the five in the UFC history, is third in in the UFC. That's that's ridiculous. This man, the way he is able to just latch it on is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's like he looks for it the entire time he's on the ground. Because he just, he, as soon as somebody makes a mistake and he sees it, he capitalizes immediately and just latches that choke on. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he he, he was in, in half guard there. And I don't, you, you, should, you should didn't have that arm over the neck. And once he got it over the neck of St. Prue... It doesn't matter. That guy has got a squeeze. He has developed that choke. You know what? I, I, last week, or a lot last week, last time we talked about OSP and his, that, uh, I'm going to call it the St. Prue choke. The last time we talked about him doing that, we're like, dude, white belts get choked. White belt. You know what? I think he could fucking choke out a brown belt with that, dude. I'm not even joking. Like, yeah. he, you just don't realize that he's got to have a squeeze like nobody's business, man. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I, I, I probably should know better. I just, you know what not to do. Everybody knows what not to do, especially against St. Pru. To just keep doing it, though. It's, it's ridiculous. I take down my three-year-old and we, ra- we roll, and he knows to let go of the guillotine, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's so crazy. It's it's nuts. And, yeah, Okami went out. He went out. He didn't even tap. He, didn't, sleeping, he tried to yeah. fight it, but he went out. That's a blood choke. That thing cut it off all circulation. If you look at it again, um, I've kind of got the uh, the post fight highlights going through right now. They're showing my boy El Kakui choking motherfuckers out, but they, they just showed how he had it. And if you look at the basketballs that uh, Saint Prue calls his shoulders, and he gets that under your chin and just flexes it, dude. I don't I don't care who you are, you can't force blood through there. You can't. The great choke, dude. The the look. I understand why it's called the Von Flu choke. He was the first one to really do it, but uh, Saint Prue was the first one to perfect it. He's made it. He's made it a, a viable weapon in top level MMA. He, it's a viable weapon now. I think other guys are going to pick up on it. I, I swear to God, other guys with tight squeezes. You get some of those guys that that you remember uh, Team Alpha Mal, how they they were the first guys to really get that arm in guillotine yeah, and really like make the really, arm really in make work it like a signature. Yeah, I think we're going to start seeing somebody in some camp with some bright guy. I, I could see Alpha Mal doing it. They're gonna they're gonna turn that. That Von Flu choke, guys with that strong squeeze and that hard elbow pressure. And again, the length, you know, I think that's part of it too is that uh, OSP is a long, tall guy and he can leverage up on those toes. I think we're going to start seeing that happen a little bit more. But I don't know. Oh, no, it's possible. It was great. Uh, very impressive. I mean, sure, it came against a guy who was just fighting at 170, but the fact is, it's a, it's, 
It's another Von Blue choke. It's it's yeah, impressive. but Okami should know better. I mean, he's the well, everybody great should know grappler. better, but he just keeps getting it. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah, until somebody learns to just just take that arm and put it above your head, put it above your own head, put it above your own head. Take your left arm and tap your right shoulder. Then you'll be okay. Yeah, just don't reach for the damn guillotine when you're on your back. It, it's unless you got full guard, just don't even do it. Yeah, it, don't yeah, even unless try. You, it. Unless, you, unless you, yeah, half guard isn't going to do it unless you've got your hands grasped. If you've got your own hands grasped underneath and you're going for an arm in and half guard, and you've got your, you know, your your outside leg up in high guard, then maybe play with it, dude. But don't do it like that, man. I'm just so, I'm so dis- dude. I'm so disappointed in that fight, man. And you know the fight that really disappointed me really disappointed me and I, it, it really it ruined my night Which who fight is that who 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 stepped in for Gedalia or who dosed her with some morphine because she didn't show no. up to fight tonight no no here's Andrade the problem. is great his, uh, is great yeah here's the problem Gedalia with Claudia Gede- tonight man uh Claudia Gedalia. I I learned that that's how you pronounce it that's I've learned uh here's her problem Tech, technique wise, technically, she's the best fighter in the entire world uh, at the division. In the division, she just you doesn't sure about have the card. She just doesn't have the cardio to go along with it, and, and then that's and that's what really hurts her. And I'm not sure if it's weight cut. If it's the weight cut, she cuts a good amount of weight to get to this weight class, or Andrade she just doesn't train her tonight. Well, Andrade should have never been fighting at 135 in the first place. Well, she was, and she did, and she made I weight. Know, I know, and she, yes, I know, but she has better cardio. I just think Claudia just has cardio issues, and they reared its ugly head again tonight because After she the was first round. She was Claudia pe- has more dis- more 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 no, cardio no, than a yeah, one round no, she, fight. She, she did a lot. She did a lot of uh, if you remember in the first round, she was piecing up uh, Andrade on the feet, even busted her open on, above the eye. And yeah, then she got taken. Of, yeah, headline. and then she got taken down, and, and she tried to go for that guillotine, and was squeezing and gassing her arms out. And then she was on the bottom, and then it was nothing but position control, which was gassing her out even more. That, and I'm not making excuses for her. She just has shit cardio, and that proves it. She needs to get her cardio back. Well, not back. She just needs to get it. Period. Um, unfortunately, I just don't know if it's ever going to happen. You know what? You know what I honestly think. I think she was looking past Andrade, and she's been training to fight a Muay Thai striker, and she was hoping that she could dance at distance. And Andrade was not having any of it, and overpowered her, took her down, and See, beat I, the shit out of her. Yeah, but I can't. I can't. The I can't, shit out of her. Man. I can't agree that she was like looking at her, not knowing that she wasn't going to come forward. That's all Andrade does. She had to have known, especially training at Greg Jackson's camp. She had to have known that she was just going to come forward. She just gassed. And yeah, Andrade beat the she shit got, out of her. She got the shit beat out of her, yeah. man. I don't Andrade. want to say she gassed, dude, because that's not given that's not given Andrade to, to just do, man. She beat the shit out of Gadea. She beat the shit out of her. I gave rounds two and three, ten eight to Gadea. Round or to Andrade. Round one, Gadea, close. I gave it to her. Rounds two and eight, ten eight, Andrade. I gave uh, I gave ten eight to round three that um, no ten nine for round two in my mind but either way uh, Andrade definitely took that fight she definitely won that fight so and and she you know what she get if she can get Yam check down like that fucking yeah. lights out dude like that dude, honestly unfortunately like I, I, unfortunately Yam check already outclassed the hell out of her I don't think I don't think anybody beats her now at this point. Well, I like think Claudia, think... if she gets cardio, yes, but Andrade just Young Jacek already proved how to beat her. You just stick and move on her the entire time. She well, did it for five rounds. It. I, I think that um, Young Jacek has better distance management, so I think that's why she beats her again. Because I think Young Jacek can stay far enough away, work the jab, you know, circle away, not not just stay right behind her and, and not let her cut the cage off. I think. Footwork wise, you're not going to get any better, any better than Yam J Chick, and so that's how she beats her. I think she beats her with footwork and jab, as she did before. But I don't know, man. Andrade, I, I would not be surprised if she pissed hotter than TRT Vitor. It wouldn't surprise me because that woman was a goddamn animal tonight. Well, I mean, she is Brazilian, but then again, so so is Klasha. But no, 
according to Andrade, Claudia is no longer Brazilian. Oh, She's no just because she, she just because she went to uh, uh, well, New Mexico and trained with uh, well, Jackson. Come on. Apparently, the Mexican supplements aren't as good as the Brazilian supplements. Yeah. <laughs> I don't no, know, it was, it was a great fight. It was a great. It was. It was a fun, fun fight. fight to watch. It was it, a fun it, fight. It was a great win for uh, Andrade. Uh, definitely puts absolutely. her up in the rankings. Um, damn. I mean, if if she wasn't coming off a loss, I'd say put Andrade up against Carolina Kabakovitz next. But I think uh, uh, Kabakovitz needs a. Uh, uh, she needs a uh, a win first. She needs to get a, get a victory going. Yeah, I don't do that to KK. She needs, she needs, she needs. Uh, what do they call those? A tune up. She needs a tune up. KK needs a tune up. She does. I believe actually, fight. I believe she does have a tune up coming up. Who's she fighting? On the next next fight, um, if I remember correctly, I'm not exactly sure, but I could have sworn she has a fight booked, and it's 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 a relatively uh, easy fight, at least a, a newer uh, fight. Um, like, what's her name? I think Jody Escobar. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, if I can remember correctly. Uh, I believe it's like Jody Escobar. She's a a newcomer to the UFC, obviously. Definitely not ranked. Um, I think they're trying to throw uh, Kavakovic a, a bone here. So, Well, she needs a tune-up or two because she got beat pretty bad last time. By against, Claudia. Uh, on, or, yeah, by Claudia. Yeah, I was going to say Andrade, but by uh, Gadea. So, yeah, let's give it to her, man. I, I, she could use it. She She's still young enough, man. Don't Don't – Theater of the Wolves just yet. Let her build this machine. Just like Rose fighting uh, Yam Jacek. Don't do that to her. But the division is so thin. I have zero interest in seeing that fight. Oh my god. Rose is going well, Rose to is get, gonna get pieced up. Yeah, she's just going to last all five rounds and she's going to get pieced up. She's a brilliant fighter, a strong girl, great heart, great skill, great technique, but she can't handle again when it when it comes the reason I love Yom J check so well because it's it's one of my favorite things is distance management, footwork, control, that, that jab of hers, that pop pop pop, that one, two, three, in and what, out. Distance, the distance management and footwork. You like that stuff? Really? I, I don't know if have I mentioned <laughs> it on the podcast before that I'm a fan of that. And again, I'm a fan of great jujitsu and passes and sweeps and all that, but just when it comes to stand up, like guys that can that can throw in a phone booth, I love it, it's fun, it's great, but for me to see a guy who can work that jab and keep the distance and throw the combinations and get out and use angles and 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 blend in the kicks with the punches on that distance match. Someone who fights a little bit like TJ Dillashaw, perhaps. I don't know. I'm just going to throw that name out there. I, I kind of like that. And I think she's the female version of that, man. She it, she uses a lot more strikes than she does kicks because she knows that she doesn't want to be on her back. But still, she has great distance management, great footwork, great angles. I'm a fanboy. No, it's fine. No, I, I agree. I agree completely. Um, I'm a fan as well. Uh, moving on to another fight, though, of a guy that I uh, was always a fan of. Um, unfortunately, it's time for him to retire. Gogon Saki. Yeah, right. Uh, now, nah, Gomi. We'll talk about Saki. We could talk about Saki right now if you want. No, we can uh, talk about Gomi. We uh, can get, we can the get fireball kid, right. man. That it, It's sad. It's, it's over. Just please stop. Yeah, it, I remember the Pride days. He was a beast. Yeah, he just the first Pride lightweight champion ever. Unstoppable, only, only Pride man, lightweight dude. champion. Unstoppable man. He was so fun to watch. But sometimes the sport outgrows you. You know. Unfortunately, he got to the UFC way too late. Yeah. Well, I he mean, held yeah. out on the contract. He he just wanted to just. Make money, which is fine. Well, I get it. He was but... making money hand over fist and pride, rightfully yeah. so. But they, but they, they were a business designed to be sold. They weren't a business designed to sustain, obviously. But uh, yeah, hey, Gomi, we love you, man. You're you're a hero in the sport. We're glad you fought in the UFC because you deserve a spot in the Hall of Fame, the MMA Hall of Fame, let alone the UFC Hall of Fame. So, Kim, great fight, dude. Way to go. Way to beat the brakes off a legend, and um, yeah, and, it, and it's really sad about it too because Gomi's on a he he's, he's got five straight losses in a row, and yeah. they're all by first round finish. That's yeah. what's sad about it. I think it was stopped to touch early. To be honest with you, you and I kind of talked about that. I think that uh, after uh, Kim hit him and dropped him, and he went down, not a single strike landed. Everything was blocked by the guard or by you know an arm pushing it to the side. Um, 
the argument is, okay, if you didn't stop it then, you would have stopped it in 15 seconds when he got, you know, Kim got Yeah, down it was on its way to being over, him, man. But... It, it was over. It was done. Yeah. You just don't do that to a legend, but you kind of do because the last four fights he got stopped in the first round. And um, I, I don't want to see him drooling at 35, 35, 45, 50 years old, you know. And he was, he was in tears when they were uh, – the, I don't know if anybody yeah. else caught that. He was in tears. And I Everyone, think he knows yeah, it's absolutely. over. And I kind of kind of was upset. That they didn't well, and look at where he mic. lost. That's the that's the same arena where he won the belt. That's the same yeah. arena where he built who the and fire. And it should have been the arena, the arena he retired. The fireball in. kid. It should yeah, have been but, the arena he retired in. They should have given him the mic, and he should have retired. Old? Yeah, but he got knocked out. And you know the rule, man. Um, how old is he? He's thirty nine years old. Oh yeah, dude, that's fucking old as shit. Unless you're Randy Couture, you're not doing it. Sorry. Yeah, but no offense to Randy Couture, dude, but I think he was in the pre-USADA era. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Mr. Come on, Couture. he was the natural. The natural, the natural was natural. No, <laughs> it, look, dude, I don't, totally I don't, natural. Look, I don't know, and I really don't fucking care because it's different era, different time. But yeah, he was, he is probably the greatest of all time. I don't know. We could talk about this, just the reverence for the old and the love and the passion for the the guys that did it before it was a sport when it was really just a fight you know what i mean no i get it i get it uh sense. uh yeah so let's talk about a, a man who came from a uh a long standing sport go gohan saki making a successful Dude. ufc de- ufc 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 debut UFC. Yeah. yeah ufc debut uh 0 and 1 record in mma but a very, very, very decorated career in kickboxing. Um, first round KO. What did you think about yeah. the stoppage? Um, I thought it was it was good. The, the reason I think it was good was because De Silva was taking a wicked beating on his feet before it got to this point. Before Gogonsaki hit him with that wicked left hook. Um, he he was almost you know out on his feet. If it was a, a kickboxing fight or a boxing fight up against the ropes, I think it would have been stopped a touch earlier. So when when De Silva got rocked and went down to his back and was seemed stiff, I mean you know he had his head forward because he didn't want to snap back against the canvas and, and all that. Uh, I think it was a proper stoppage. Um, I don't think Saki had anything left in him to get on top of him and pound him. So thank God it stopped. But. Uh, I agree with the stoppage. I agree with the stoppage because of yeah, the that's... damage previous. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought was funny about it because uh, I was thinking in my head, like, if he doesn't finish De Silva this round, like, right now, he's going to lose in the second round. De Silva's going to finish him. And they start swinging because De Silva was coming up on him. He was coming out. He was, like, coming up in that fight towards the end. He was lighting him up, knees, elbows, Silva, and everything. Yeah, and... De Silva's used to a five-round fight. Saki's used to a three-round fight, man. And so, again, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. We can talk about the fight that we shall not name, the, the you know, the Harry Potter uh, fucking fight. Yeah. It's a sprint. And you can see Gogon Saki was sprinting for the first three minutes, and right about the 315, 320 mark, he had nothing left. De Silva knew that and started to pour it on him, and he got a little bit cocky and left his hands down because he did get pieced up a touch before then, and he got dropped, man. He got dropped by Wicked Saki, and, and, and Saki admitted at the end in his post fight interview oh, gotta work on my cardio. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I honestly believe that a, uh, a trip to the middleweight division would probably be best for him. He's he's very he, undersized for the light heavyweight division. You're um, right, but again, he comes from that kickboxing slash boxing background. I know, but it's, it's cutting gonna, that it's, kind of weight. It, it, he's got to learn because it's going to be hard when he's going to if he wants to try to get it against those uh, top guys in the light heavyweight division. You think St. Cruz just going to stand with him? No, St. Cruz going to put his ass this, on his back. You're asking this gentleman to give up the sugars and sweets. Look at that he, face. That's yeah. a man who enjoys himself a chocolate if he, bar. If he wants to be successful and he wants to try to win a title. In MMA, yeah, you got to do it. Sorry, man. Much respect. Kickboxing, brother. You got to do something. And fighting undersized in 2017, unless your name is Frankie Edgar, and last I checked, it's not, you're not winning a title. No, his name's Gogon Saki. I yeah. think I said that right. No, you said that right. But, he's uh, 33, man. Can he get there at yes. the middleweight? At middleweight, yes, he can. He can learn to weight cut. You can learn to weight cut. Unfortunately, he won't learn to well, stop it's... people like DC's takedowns. But I did like no. what DC said in the pre-fight show. Um, he said, 
what are you talking about? I'm going to be retired by the time this guy works to a title fight. He's right. So, <laughs> yeah, he's totally right. I love it. But it's because one of, he's I like one DC and one fight. in MMA, and okay, he had a great show against De Silva. So let's talk about who do you put him against next? Who? Latifi? Okay. Put him no, against a real wrestler no, like Latifi. Latifi. Latifi would put him on his back so quick. I'm Good. sorry. At Prove this a point, fucking point. Oh my god. No. They if if they want if they want Saki to be a star, if they want to try to make money off the man, especially with these international fights, you don't okay. you, you you give him favorable matchups like they did tonight. Favorable. Then, Latifi then, is then, not favorable. Then he never then he never then he never becomes a championship contender. Because you gotta beat a Latifi if you want to freaking run at the belt. Well, you can do that later, but you don't do that in your second UFC fight. Then who do you got? Who do you got? I mean, look what they just did to uh, Tyson Pedro. They threw him in against Latifi way too early. Just wasn't ready for it. So, but but the the difference is 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 Saki is a star. Saki can make money, especially overseas in Japan. Okay, but how many times a year do they fight in Japan? Once. Doesn't matter. They can do it more than once. Saki's a star. They can make money. They can use them. I'm just saying, man. They, they can also get viewerships and ratings from Japan because of Saki. More people would watch over there because he's he's a legend in, in kickboxing. You he's got, a you gotta, legend, you gotta, absolutely. you got to use that star power so you don't just immediately throw him in there. What I mean, we were talking about Connor earlier. What type of fighter did they avoid for Connor for the longest time because they didn't want to ruin his star power? Wrestlers. The only well, time they gave him a wrestler was when it was a wrestler coming on on 13 days' notice. The, that's the only time. They protect – yeah, it was smart. Okay. It built there him up. Give, give him a Steve Bossy? Yeah, uh, okay. Steve Bossy has a fight. maybe? I think Bossy has a fight coming up next, but the winner of Bossy and whoever he's fighting, I forgot who he's fighting off the top of my head. But, okay. yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Bossy would throw down. That would be a great fight. Misha Serkinov, maybe? Okay, we're talking some guys. No, Misha Serkinov would absolutely demolish him on the ground. Well, is Misha going to take him down? Misha likes to stand and trade. No, Misha's a ground guy. He just got caught by Ozdemir. Nobody saw that coming. All right, all right, all right. So we got Bosi, the winner of the Bosi fight. I don't know who he's fighting next either. I'm just trying to look at some guys and some names, but I'm just trying to think for him. Okay. Yeah, bring back a James Tahuna. Who cares? Bring him back. I don't know. He's bring probably back retired. Tahuna. Yeah, he's probably retired. I don't care. I hope he's retired. Give him a, give him a, Sean, a, give him a Sean O'Connell. I think Sean O'Connell's still in the UFC. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Give him a CB Dalloway. No offense to Dalloway, but his take down no, injuries. Da, are no, Dalloway would take him down immediately. Ed Herman, immediately. maybe. Yeah, you give him. No, Ed Herman still got jujitsu and he's got wrestling to be able to take him down. You Hold gotta on. give him Everybody somebody. Everybody else does. You gotta give Tom him somebody. Waller's gonna take him down. Give him Manawa. Manawa will still take him down. That's too I mean, high, man. That's too high. I think Manawa's got the reach advantage on him. I mean, give him dude, you got to give. Him, I, I like the Sean O'Connell. I like the Steve Basse. Um, Brian Stan comes out of retirement. Yeah, it's not happening, but still. <laughs> Brian Stan is but you, you at this point in his cities. career, at this point in his career, you avoid giving him people like Misha Serkinov, Jared Cannonier, fighters that have a good ground game and a good takedown game. What they were will take down John Saki. Monte. Give he him Monte. I him mean out. that. That's going to be a, str- a slugfest. Because Beyonce, yeah, Beyonce's got decent boxing, but he's got great takedown, so he's going to make the attempt to take you down. But he doesn't have, you know what I mean? I think that's a good fight because that's going to test him a little bit. Because his takedown Vlante defense will stand good up, Vlante will stand up with him and, and throw down. Yeah, give him that. It's just like the Steve Bossy fight. Give yeah. him that. That's fine. But well, you don't, Bosse, you don't, Bosse isn't even going to attempt the takedown. I like the fact that, that, that Beyonce, Beyonce will attempt the takedown. He's got good wrestling. So Beyonce will stand and box, and he'll get in tight with you, and he'll go for a body lock, and he'll he'll go for some takedowns. Because I honestly, God, I thought Saki's takedown defense tonight looked really good. I thought it well, looked I mean, good. It was against Silva went for Silva, a couple takedowns. So... He had the overhook. He just just like Cormier was saying in the pre-fight, he worked that outside underhook, and he got it, and he he had great takedown defense tonight. The couple two attempts that were shot at him. Give so give, let's let's give somebody here, here, here up. You let's go. Give here you go. Here you go. No, here you go. Here you go. Go, go, Con, go on Saki versus Khalil Roundtree. Bam. There you go. Fight. Thing's over. Roundtree's going to take him down in 10 seconds and pound No, on. Roundtree doesn't have a ground game. He doesn't want to take anybody down. He's a striker. And it's perfect. It, it's perfect. It, it, it'll be fireworks. All right. All right. All right. Did you hear that? You got you got that one in the books there, Sean Selby? Make it happen. <laughs> MMA to the max doing your job once again. Yeah. Because... So. uh. 
Yeah, because because I got the balls to do things that people don't do. And you know who doesn't have balls anymore? Um, I'm Teruto guess... Ishihara. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> dude, That's a great Ro- transition, dude. Yeah, R- Rolando D. Oh, my Three times. God. Jesus. Dude, that third one, I'm holding my own right now, dude. That, that was, was so loud. bad. It was straight that was shit so to nasty. And they banned, they banned the Muay Thai Steel Cup. Yeah, and the fact you that he also looked cup at the ref and said was like, and actually asked, told the ref, that was only the first time. No, fuck yeah. it, it was the third time. <laughs> it was the first time you kicked him in the dick. The other two were knees. The hell is wrong with you? And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I got to First time a warning, second time a point, third time three strikes are out. That should have been a DQ. That that that's the way I would put it. That's what I would put in the rules. Yeah, well, at least because you next time, out. next time you, you won't. Point. Yeah, at least I was worried for a minute because he was taking a very long time. Yeah, I mean that fight was what it was. It was a good fight. I thought Yushihara should have won it as he did. Um, Manny Pacquiao lost, even though he had some great kicks, which surprised <laughs> me. Oh wait, that's that's not Pacquiao. Never mind. That's that is a bloated... Dude, does he not look like Pacquiao's long lost freaking half brother? Yeah, kind Holy of bloated, crap. bloated Pacquiao. Yeah, you know what's, you know what the bit. sad thing about it is is uh, if he didn't kick him in the nuts the third time and get that point deducted, he would have walked away with the majority draw. Yeah, I know. He cost himself mm. a majority draw. Like he he was I the honestly, reason he lost the fight. That's I honestly, the sad I have part. No idea where he was trying to kick with that kick other than his dick. He it wasn't like it he was turning afterwards. his hips. Yeah, it wasn't like he was turning his hip over for an inside leg kick. He went, like, straight to the dick. That was like a street yard fucking dick kick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight up, pow, right in the ball sack. Yeah. Oh, man, that – oh, damn, that was loud. It, yeah, it hurt. It hurt me watching. I just uh, – a, a, a good low, low blow like that, a good low shot like that where uh, you can just hear the, the – it's not really a smack. It's a thud. It, it, that's just really what gets me go. Oh God! It was shin to cup, man. It's awful. Yeah, I can only imagine. Uh, opening the card though is a uh, Formiga. Ju- Juicy uh, Formiga is choking out uh, Uke Sasaki uh, in the first round. Very entertaining fight for at least the the four and a half minutes that it lasted. Uh, Dude, do you agree with Formiga's call out? You think he gets a title shot again? I mean, he did. He did mention. Well, he didn't. He hasn't had a title shot yet. He, his thing is is a. Uh, Sorry, and again, the wrong word, but yeah. Everybody that beats him gets a title shot afterwards, and it's been like that for the most part. Um, he's just looking for his own. Um, after uh, Mighty Mouse disposes of Ray Borg, whoever Mighty they, Mouse is going to thirty-five. Yeah, I mean, you we can either put Formiga. You can either put Formiga against a Sergio Pettis. Uh, I think again. I don't. Um, Formiga, no, they have not fought yet. You can either put him against a uh, Sergio Pettis, or you can put him against uh, Henry Cejudo again, which uh, Cejudo beat him by a split decision. So, yeah, close. and I agree with that decision. I, I thought oh, yeah, I, I agreed. Thought, I, uh, I agreed with it as well. But yeah, Formiga lost that fight. Yeah, it, it was close. So that's so, all. That, so that settles it since we agreed. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah. So so far his losses have been to Dodson, Benavidez, Cejudo, and Borg. To all top, all top five flyweights, all of them. So, I mean, he's he's one of the best in the world. He's one of the best fight, uh, flyweights in the world. He was the best flyweight in the world until losing the 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 T- Tachi Palace fights uh, flyweight championship to Ian McCall, who yes. also was one of the best flyweights in the world. What? Man, injury and stuff, dude. I wish that yeah, guy his career, his career, career, his career is done. McCall. He's he's done. I know. I lo- he, I believe he said he retired not just because of whatever brain injuries he suffered, but his fucking hand. He can't open a jar of pickles without breaking his hand anymore. And uh, I loved watching that guy fight. But and that, and again, that's what we talked about before, man. The amount of money these guys get just doesn't justify. Because what is Ian McCall going to do? Open up a gym where it's viable for the next ten to fifteen years, unless he gets like a real fight team behind him in his gym. What does that do? McCall doesn't have anything to worry about, man. I hope not, dude. He's a good guy. I know he's got to take care of his daughter and all those. things. I know he's dude. got his own podcast too, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And unlike unlike us, I'm pretty sure he has some sponsors paying him some money for it. So, well, I hope so. I could on it at least because I know he's friends with Mr. Rogan. But yeah, I that's a guy. I don't, I don't hope a... so that much, man. I want some of that sponsorship money. Why don't you guys send it our way? Well, once you and I stop being fat, lazy fucks, and maybe on it, <laughs> like, hey, those are athletic gentlemen. They're talking about MMA. 
Yeah, we need to uh we need to we need to branch out here. We need to we need to work on a marketing. Yeah, we need to work on a marketing. Um four listeners. It's a pleasure talking to you again. Yeah, I'm so glad all four of you listen every week. That's pretty awesome. Um sorry about last week, so we're making up to you this week because I'm extra enthusiastic. Last week's gonna drop it to three. <laughs> so <laughs> Damn it, not again. Oh, yeah, he's beaten. He's beaten guys like uh, Jorgensen. He's beat Wilson Hayes. He's beat well, Dustin. Who hasn't beat Scott Jorgensen? <sighs> That's a very good question. Even, even, uh, his, even his own skin has beaten Scott Jorgensen. That's fucked up, dude. That guy has a, <laughs> a, a like a thing. What yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I don't care. I can make a joke. That was good because he's lost to. Everybody? He lost to Manville, the Anvil. Yeah. Alejandro oh, Perez, yeah. Wilson Hayes, Zach yeah, well, everyone, every Yeah, a lot of people lose to Wilson Hayes. Eddie Wineland, well, of course, lost to Hannah Morrell. What was he doing fighting at 135? I guess over 425. Well, he was right? at 135, and then he tried to dry, drop yeah, to yeah. 125 and uh, had yeah, no, no success perform. whatsoever. Dominic Cruz. <sighs> yeah, he lost to Cruz twice, I believe, didn't he? Yeah, WEC, I think. Yeah. Or maybe it was once. I don't remember. I think it was once. Um, if we're gonna be talking about Scott Jorgensen so much, man. I don't know, dude. We get on these tangents. We just yeah, Scott, I, I mean, I liked Scott Jorgensen. He was a cool guy. He was a good fighter for a while, but he fell so off. Formiga, and... Formiga versus Pettis. All right, we've we've made that matchup. Now we're on to what happens to Nakamura versus Marino. Marino forgot to fight, and he got uh, <laughs> his ass kicked by Nakamura, who I think is also Pacquiao's second cousin, once removed. It looks like they all look like I, fucking Pacquiao I, I, to me. I like, I like, I like, I like Keita Nakamura, man. That guy's, oh, that guy's he's great. He's a great fighter. Yeah, he's he looks great. phenomenal tonight. He I'm, beat I'm Marino's glad ass. I'm glad he's getting, he got his, another, his uh, other shot in the UFC. So. Yeah, he, he beat Marino's ass, dude. And hats off, man. Good job. It was a good fight. It was a good fight. It was a close fight. Went to split decision. Uh, I'm Sierra just sad, dude. I got my ass kicked in our league tonight. And I tried to yeah. take some risks and didn't pay <laughs> off. Suri Kondo defeated uh, uh, Shan Mijian. Uh, I think I got that right. Um, by split decision as well, I yep. didn't think it should have been a split. I, I thought Kondo clearly had it at least 2-1. to one. Um, uh, Shinsu, uh, Shinso and Zai defeats Luke Jomo. Uh, very disappointed in that fight. I had Jomo winning, uh, picked at least, but no, he definitely lost that fight, I thought. Um, All right. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Daichi Abai, I think is how you pronounce it. I don't remember off the top of my head. Sorry. Defeated uh, Hungu Lim uh, after 13 months off. Make uh, Aba, I think ha ah, is it Abai, Abi, Abe? That might, Abe. Abe, Abe, yeah, Abe might be right. Uh, made, making his UFC debut at, at five and zero. He's now six and zero. Great fight. Every fight on this card is really good. Even all the fights, honestly, not not a single fight was boring in my mind. So that's why when everybody was talking a good about card, yeah. Oh. You know, everybody sees the card like, who? Oh, nobody cares about this fight. Yeah, well, you know what? The ones that you don't care about, that people talk about, are the best ones. And we said that on this show many times, numerous times. These are always the best fights. Well, that's how it is when we're talking about, like, these fighters and, and like, who's that guy? I never heard of him. What's that guy? Just watch these cards, and you'll learn to find out who they are. I'm, I know Robert and I are going to watch some some RFAs and some legacy fights and some, you know, King of the Cage out here locally in Southern California. We're going to know who some of these guys are more than most, but if you just watch these UFC fight night fights, you're going to learn who a lot of these guys are and you're going to see them, oh yeah, try to remember when he did this and you're going to you're going to find guys showing up and and becoming, you know, names, you know, just just like Alan Joe Band tonight. A lot of people may not have known who he was, but look what the hell he did behind the desk tonight. Phenomenal job by Joe Ban. Yeah, he, he was did a really, really good job. I enjoyed I it. Like it. I enjoyed him. And the funny thing is, is especially uh, Bisbee has always got to alpha male everybody, and uh, Joe Ban was like, "No, I'm not having it. I'm here for a reason, asshole. I'm going to say some things too." So, yeah, was no, Joe Ban was very impressive. Uh, uh, better uh, behind the desk than he is as a fighter. Sorry, like Joe Ban, <laughs> but the man has no head movement. Um, Maybe maybe he want, might want to move away from fighting and go on a behind the desk completely and stick with modeling. And he's like always got guy. a job modeling. Yeah, he's always got that job. Him and uh, Elias Theodore. 
Yeah, Dead Man is pretty, and and that aggravates me. He's pretty. He's got that prettier hair. than me. It's the hair. He, he not only is he prettier than me, but he can beat the living shit out of me. <laughs> that's not fair. That's not fair, Joe Ben. Well, that's can't probably, have it all. That, that could also be about seventy five percent of the world too. So prettier than me, but I can beat up at least thirty three percent of the world because half of the world is if women. If we're counting, so, I mean, if we're counting kids. Yeah, kids and women. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, right. there's a lot of women I can beat up, and there's a lot of women that can beat me up, and there's most kids I can beat up. So that's what I'm saying. I could beat up 33 percent of the world. That's still more than I and, can say. And and I'm saying like at least I'm like at least a five on a good day. So you know, <laughs> half the world's better looking than me. So I'm not doing so bad. But um, you kind of touched base on this card, last week's card, tomorrow night. Riverside yes, Joe's yeah, boy, Lorenz Larkin, is fighting tomorrow night against Paul Simtek. Punch it after the bell, and the fight's over. Fuck you in the mouth daily. <laughs> Still um, holding on just, to that, huh? Not, you know, and I'm not a Koscheck fan. Never liked Josh Koscheck. Never. Not in tough. Never have I liked him. He's just not the kind of personality that I jive with. I thought he cheap, tried to cheap shot him, you know, over um, – uh, Herb Dean, I think, was the ref at the time, trying to throw punches at the end of the fight because he got ground and pounded and he got out wrestled by Koscheck. I just thought he was a poor sport. And he has shown to be a poor sport ever since. Fucking Roy McDonald beat the fucking brakes off of him. And he wanted to complain, well, why didn't he want to stand in and trade with me? Well, because he's got a 99.9% chance of beating your ass on the ground and he's got a 75% chance of beating your ass on the feet. So he takes you down, asshole. Learn some takedown defense, you know? I just have no love for that guy, dude. Fuck Simtex. But I have a very little bit of... Uh, it's not a very strong opinion. I have a mild opinion on Paul Daly. What about you? How do you feel about tomorrow night's fights? Um, That's just one of the fights I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Larkin versus Daly is going to be very entertaining. Very, very entertaining strike, uh, striking uh, fight, striking match. Um, yeah, I hope I'm not I hope exactly takes sure down who round, I'm though. not exactly sure who I would pick in this fight because I do think Lorenz Larkin possesses elite striking, but so does Paul Daly. I'm um, I'm really looking forward to the main event of Benson Henderson and Patricky Fieri. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be fireworks in my mind. Uh, I I don't know if Henderson still has it, so I'm not sure if he's gonna pull off the victory because Patricky does have power. The first fight was was a bit of a letdown. Patricky ended up hurting his knee in it, and Benson. Well, was that was uh, that wasn't to, Patricky to, to actually. Punch. That was uh, that was his little brother, Patricio. Oh, you're right. That was Patricio. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. But that's no yeah. fair. They're both pitbull. Yeah, they're they're both and they're both really good. Um, they're both Aaron Pico. Fighters. I'm excited to see him uh, fight again. Yeah, featherweight, think, right? Yeah, featherweight. Yeah, which is what he should have been. Uh, this yeah. is a more favorable matchup for him to win. Uh, Adam 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 Picciolotti. I, I think that's how you remember. I can't remember Piccolotti. I'm excited to see him fight. Uh, he's a, he's nine and zero. He's a beast. I like watching that guy fight. Bellator's always been good on their uh, prospects. Always good on on finding the prospects. So it's it's going to be a good Coker, card. The best I won't be watching it. Bellator yeah. made. I won't be watching it till Sunday after, Sunday afternoon when I get home from work. But I'll I'll definitely be watching it. So. Uh, I'm gonna try. Oh, to don't worry. I'll spoil it. I'll spoil it yeah. all for you. I I'll bet. Send you text messages all night, so you'll you'll know what's going on. I bet. Yeah. Don't do that. I got a You know I'm going to. I'm not really a nice person. I'm gonna block your fucking phone number. <laughs> Riverside Joe blocked. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Joe. We got social media. Let's let's get ready to get out of here. We both got some big stuff to do tomorrow. Yeah, we've got. Uh, your little daughter's birthday party tomorrow to go to. That's right. You know, house chores and whatnot. For the first weekend, I don't have a crew working out there at uh, my different projects on a Saturday, so I don't have to worry about answering the phone and dealing with all that nonsense. So that's helpful for me. Um, but that's just a, a side note. I digress. It allows me to drink more on a Friday night than normal. There you uh, go. My social media, you can get a hold of me at JoeHud45 on Twitter, as well as MMA to the Max Joe. On Instagram, again, I'm working on my social media game. A gentleman of my advanced years of 37 years old didn't grow up Twittering and Instagramming and Facebook and whatnot. So I'm learning. So if you want to actually stay up to date with all this fun stuff, uh, Robert, how do they get a hold of you? Well, you could always find me at uh, my own personal Twitter account of it's at it's rock robster. Find me on Instagram at uh, MMA to the Max Rob. 
Uh, going back to Twitter, though, if you want to follow the show, you can always find that at uh, MMA to the sorry, excuse me, on Twitter at MMA to the Max Show. Uh, follow everything you can there. Go to our Facebook page at uh, facebook.com forward slash MMA to the Max podcast to follow everything we talk about there. We always uh, get everybody's opinions on the fights coming up, as well as post all of our new episodes. Uh, if you don't want to follow us there, which really sucks if you don't, go visit us at uh, w2mnet.com. That is our parent site for the show. All of our shows are up there, as well as plenty of other content uh, having to deal with wrestling, football, music, movies, all forms of entertainment and sports, even soccer. Yeah, right. Who cares? Um, <laughs> uh, you mean <laughs> football, not American yeah, football. football. Like you saying. Yeah, right. Uh, as always, we will try to respond to any messages or comments you post on our page. If you want to come on and just tell me how much the, you hate the Kansas City Chiefs, I know how many Raider fans are out there. Go ahead and do I'm so. I'm not a Raiders fan. I, I can take hate it. the Chiefs because you like them. So. Yeah, that's fine. I get that a lot, actually, from a lot of people. But, uh, yeah, find us next week. There's no fight next week. We're going to discuss the before Bellator. We, before we punch out, I just want to make note that the UFC listens to MMA to the Max. I'm um, scrolling through the uh, interwebs here, and right now, on this day in UFC history, they note Demetrius Johnson became the first and only flyweight champion in the UFC, <laughs> right? Didn't we talk about that's how they're supposed to be marketing him as the first and only, the one and only? So they should, UFC, but they you're don't. welcome. If you want some more marketing advice, again, get a hold of me, Joe Hud forty five uh, at Joe Hud forty five on Twitter, or MMA to the Max Joe. Okay, I can give you some more advice. The first couple times you're going to be free, but I'm going to start charging you guys pretty soon here. Rockhold, you're on notice as well. Okay, I'm on done. that note, <laughs> I guess that's as good as any to uh, cut this off. Go to bed. <laughs> so right. uh thanks for listening everybody as always i am your host robert taylor with my co-host hey. i am uh, riverside joe we'll see you next week take care the following podcast is a w2m network original production visit w2mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts plus news reviews articles and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.